Today's tutorial is version sensitive. If you're using After Effects CC 2017 or newer, then this tutorial will work perfectly fine for you. But if you're using previous versions of After Effects, please refer to this guide to follow along without issue. Hello everyone, in today's Extend Script Quick Tip tutorial, we're going to be going over the property value type inside of After Effects. Now this is essentially a property like 3D, 2D, or 1D to represent what kind of property we're dealing with. For example, if we're looking at position or anchor point, that is a two-dimensional point which requires an X and a Y value. If, however, position was a 3D value, if I made this a 3D layer, it would then become a three-dimensional value. Inside of the After Effects scripting guide, we have several types of property value types from having no value to having a custom value or being a very specific type of data only in After Effects like a shape or a mask or a layer. But when we write scripts and we go ahead and grab the value called property value type, we don't get told, okay, this is a 3D layer, this is a 2D layer. Instead, we're given these numbers here, which have gone ahead and created a quick guide on which one is which. So today we're going to be taking a look at why this is like this and how we can adjust different types of these property values. So I have here a script inside of Extend Script, which essentially will go through my layer here and I've selected this transform effect and it's going to loop through each one of the properties, tell us the name of the property and what kind of value it is. So if I go ahead and link this to After Effects and run it, you can see we get anchor point, which gives us 2D spatial, position, which is also 2D spatial, and it's gonna go through and tell us which each kind of property value is. So the way we're gonna do this is just again, loop through what we want and then we're gonna convert each of the numbers to give us the actual value. Now you might be asking yourself, why do we need this? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first of which is if you don't know what kind of property you're dealing with, if you're given a random property and need to identify how many values are inside of it, for example, two in this case of position, well, we can use this to get that value. It's also important because say we have an effect like curves. If I go ahead and change this from effect two, which is my transform effect and change it to effect one, which is my curves, it's going to give me a custom value type for my entire curve panel here. So you can see curves is equal to a custom value. Channel is equal to one dimensional because it's just a drop down. but curves itself, this guy right here, although we can animate it, this is a custom value. Now this is something that we currently are not able to script inside of After Effects. If it's a custom value, we currently have no way of uniformly adjusting these values. So that is another reason why we need to check the values because even if an effect appears as it has a value, sometimes it can be a custom value. Another example would be the levels effect. You have a histogram here and this histogram is also a custom value which we cannot adjust unless we use our mouse. So with that being said, let's go ahead and write a quick script to take a look at how we can identify these types. So the first thing I'll do is just create a variable called layer, and I'm going to predefine this as the active item or the active composition. So we're going to assume one composition is selected, and then we're just going to grab layer one in this case. All right, and then we're going to loop through all of the properties of any of these effects. So again, I'm going to use this transform effect, which is effect number one, two. So I'm going to use var i is equal to 1. We'll start at effect or property number 1. And for i is less than or equal to our layer, the effects, or sorry, effect number 2, which is our transform effect. And we want the num properties or the number of these values inside of here. And then we'll just increment i by 1, and this will loop through all of our effects. And then I'm just going to say right line. And each time through, I'm going to tell the user uh, the current property or property i, and I want to tell them the name. So if I just run this, it should give me anchor point, position, uniform scale, etc. So yep, now we're getting the proper values here. After we get the property name, we're going to add on the property value type. So I'll grab my layer, second effect again, which is our transform, and we're going to grab the current property again, or property i. And what we want to do now is get property value type. 
And I'm also going to add in some space here and an equal sign just so we can separate these values and read it better. Run this again. And looking at it, you can see we're now getting these values that we saw earlier. Now all that's left to do is use a switch statement like this to essentially convert it. So I'm going to make a quick function called convert property num. And it's just going to require a number. And then we're simply going to have a variable called string, which is an empty string of text. And this is going to be equal to any of our values like um, 2D spatial, 1D, etc. And then we'll have just one switch statement to check our number. And now we can go ahead and reference our guide. So the first case is if it's 6412. If this is the case, then string is going to equal no value. We don't have to spell exactly like this, but this is just the general idea. And then we can go through and fill in every case one by one. 6413, that's going to be 3D spatial which again is just a 3D value specifically referring to position, scale, or an actual spatial property. Uh, then 6414, which is going to be a 3D regular. And then we can just go through and add all of these. All right, so once we're done with our switch statement, the last thing to do is return our string. Now what we can do, instead of calling um, the property value type, I'm going to take that same line of code and we're going to pass it through. So convert property num and inside of that we need to pass through our number and this entire line of code here layer dot effect two dot property I dot property value type is going to give us that number. So now if we go ahead and run it, it's going to go through and again tell us exactly what kind of values we have. And then we can use this information to better direct our code, whether or not we need to have certain functions for 3D values and certain functions for 1D values. It's all up to you, and this is just the basis of that entire process. All right, guys, I hope that covers everything about property value types. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next one.